everyone, I am Dr. Ravina, NHS doctor specialised in women's health and like to welcome you to this dedicated channel for women's health where we discuss all taboo topics surrounding women's bodies. If you have any comments and questions, please drop them in the comments below and I can make a video for you on it. And any comments can help to educate our community of women. In today's video, we'll be discussing does lubricant affect your odds of getting pregnant? So before we dive into this topic, please do follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and also subscribe to us on YouTube. You can share this with anyone that you love just so that we can ensure that we disseminate evidence-based information. Now, the purpose of this video today is because there are lots of lubricants on the market. And I think it's really important that people know what the risks are of using anything in the genital region. There's lots of false marketing saying, you know, this is a fertility lubricant or this is a lubricant that's gonna help you get pregnant. And actually some lubricants from doing the research um, on this topic, I found a lot of them can actually cause more harm than benefit. And um, there's only a couple that we would actually advise if it's something that you want to use. So in terms of the most up-to-date statistic, about 65% of women will use lubricant during sexual intercourse. And what I wanted to do in this topic was one, talk about why people use lubricant, what the benefits are, and also what, um, what the side effects are with certain types of lubricants. So we'll talk about different types and I'll tell you sort of the pros and cons for each. Okay, let's dive straight in. So why do men and women use lubricant? So the main reason is to reduce friction and reduce dryness down below in the vagina. So this can happen for many reasons. So as women get older, their um, egg count gets less. So their estrogen also gets less. And that means you'll have more dryness and um, you may get a little bit more friction down below as you get older. If you are going through fertility treatments, you may be on clomiphene and clomiphene works by reducing your circulating estrogen. And that can also mean that you have dryness and a lack of moisture down below, especially when you're sexually stimulated, you may not produce as much lubricant as perhaps you did before. So that may be um, a reason why you might use lubricant. If you're quite young, if you're noticing that you've got a dry vagina if you've got other kind of symptoms that may be related to menopause like hot flushes or irregular periods then I would suggest you talk to your doctor because this could be a sign of premature ovarian insufficiency and you'd need to get a blood test for this as well as a scan so um, just be aware that if you're quite young with dryness just have a look for any other um, menopausal type symptoms just so that um, we're not missing anything else. So just to point out the importance of vaginal dryness and its consequences on having sexual intercourse and pregnancy, I looked at one particular study where they looked at 900 couples who were trying to conceive and they found out of that 900, 86% of couples found that vaginal dryness reduced their sexual intimacy. And that just is quite a huge amount, 86%, because that shows such a large uh, quantity of people had reduced intimacy, so perhaps hadn't had sexual intercourse as often, which of course is so detrimental to couples who are trying to, con to conceive. So if you are using lubricant, it just shows how important it is for you to use it if you need to, because it can have implications on your chance of getting pregnant. So now let's move on to the different types of lubricants and what studies have shown in terms of the effect it has not only on the vagina, but also on the sperm itself. So the first lubricant is KY Jelly. Now this is a super popular lubricant, um, lots of people use it. And looking at a particular study, which I can link here if you want to read it a little bit more, I've got it in front of me, so I'm just reading a few statistics from the paper. KY jelly is thought to change the osmolality of the sperm. So sperm is produced by men in the testicles and then it's, that's released into the vagina. However, the KY jelly can change the water content of the sperm, so it's not um, how it's physiologically formed in the testicle and that can cause DNA damage. So the sperm is may have actually faulty material in it and may not successfully fertilize the egg. So the second type of lubricant I'm going to talk about is one called Aquagel. And um, just looking at a different paper, um, I'm gonna put a graph here where you can see that uh, the sperm is exposed to different percentages of the Aquagel lubricant and you'll be able to see that with the changes in strength of the lubricant, the sperm will not always survive it. 
So as the strength gets greater, the quantity of sperm that survives is less. Another type of lubricant is a silicon-based lubricant. So Replens is an example. And it was found that 60% of sperm had reduced motility. And so that means that 60% of the sperm weren't moving as quickly as, as they usually do. So there's some damage to the tail, so they're not swimming as quickly. And this toxic effect on the sperm was um, non-viable after 60 minutes. So after the sperm had been exposed to Replens uh, for 60 minutes, it was then toxic and they weren't able to be functional. Other um, lubricants that have been mentioned are one, baby oil. Um, however, this is shown to have little impact on sperm in comparison to the other lubricants. Olive oil was also assessed and that was thought there was reduced motility by 42%. And saliva as well, that was thought to have a great decrease in sperm motility and uh, the greatest decrease um, in the first five minutes was found with saliva. So that's something to bear in mind, um, especially if you're performing oral sexual intercourse that can also affect the sperm. Other things to consider with lubricant, um, just to sort of to summarize, is that the lubricant can reduce the sperm motility, so how quick it, how quick it moves, but it's also thought to affect the vagina and it's thought to change the pH level of the vagina so um, it's not as acidic as it normally is. And that means it's not an optimum environment for the sperm to thrive in. And so if it can't survive that long, it won't reach the egg. It won't be um, living for long enough. So just to summarize the key ways that lubricants can affect fertility. One, they are spermicidal, so they'll kill the sperm. Two, they can reduce the motility of the sperm so they don't swim as fast. Three, they can actually change the internal environment of the vagina. And that's thought because the lubricant contains the pH, so the vagina won't be as acidic as it normally is, which isn't the optimum environment for the sperm to thrive in and therefore won't reach the egg because it won't survive um, its full sort of five days in the reproductive system. There's an important point to make in regards to lubricants that advertise themselves as a type of contraceptive. And there's some lubricants that are thought to be spermicidal lubricants. So these are for people that aren't trying to get pregnant, um, they're trying to prevent it, but they think by using lubricant that will prevent the pregnancy. So a lot of the studies that I've mentioned have shown that these lubricants can kill sperm, but that doesn't mean it's going to kill all the sperm. So lubricants aren't a reliable method for contraception if you're looking to use it as a form of contraception. I suggest you talk to your doctor if you do are looking for a form of contraception because lubricant isn't an effective form at all and I wouldn't suggest that you rely on it. So that's just a little point uh, to make in regards to if you're in the category of people that aren't looking to get pregnant just yet. So to conclude, the key points to look for in your lubricant are one, the pH, ideally pH 7, um, because it'll be neutral, it shouldn't cause uh, too much acidity or alkaline environment in your vagina and that means it will have less sort of effect on your sperm itself. Um, stay clear of ingredients like parabens and glycerine, which can be seen in lubricants. So make sure you look at the back of the packet, looking at the key ingredients that they use. So make sure you stay clear of those. The second thing to take away from this video is the key ones, sort of the key lubricants that we would suggest are uh, Precede and Conceive Plus. These are thought to be fertility friendly. Um, there's some of the studies have shown that they aren't spermicidal, so they shouldn't kill off the sperm. And finally, the best lubricant that exists is foreplay. So allowing a natural lubricant to be produced from the body is the best thing that we can suggest in terms of lubricant. So I hope you found this video uh, useful and hopefully you can share it with people that would also find it useful. Drop any comments in the comment section down below. And of course you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok and subscribe to YouTube for any future videos. All the best, take care, bye.